Hey, hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up the Sudachi emulator on the ROG Alloy and ROG Alloy X. So this is a Nintendo Switch emulator and it works pretty well. So it's an offshoot of Yuzu. Obviously, you know, we had all the issues around Yuzu getting taken down and it came back with a force. Now, you know, there's Suyu, there's Sudachi, there's a few other ones as well, which I'll probably create videos around. So, you know, you can you know, set it up the one that you prefer and i'm gonna throw in a few bonus things in this video of how to get the best performance as well out of the emulator i just want to say this video does not condone piracy for legal reasons you should always you know own the console own the games you know etc etc get the firmware and the keys you know using proper means and without further ado let's begin first of all we need to open up a web browser i'll just grab edge we want to search for Sudachi emulator. I've already searched for it before. Go to the website. I'll provide a link in the description to this. In case you're watching it, maybe on the ROG Alloy. So click download. And yeah, you will just like the download page would just kind of look like the home page. But when you scroll down, you'll see Windows. Click download. And in here, there isn't like an obvious download button. You just click Windows. And then you start downloading. I've already got it downloaded, so I'm going to cancel that. Next, of what I'm going to do is show you what else I've got. So we have the Sudachi zip file. We have a firmware, which is 18.0.0, latest firmware. And, uh, you know, again, you know, should always legally obtain it, etc., etc. You know, if you Google it, you can easily find these and their production keys as well, which we'll need again. I can't show you where to get these. On a side note, my Patreon page will be launching very, very soon. We shall show you exclusive, we shall provide you, I mean, exclusive, exclusive videos on all the all the emulation goodness that you want that won't be on youtube so without further ado let's right click you extract the games i'm using a external mouse by the way this makes things a bit easier but you can always navigate using either your finger on here or on these two buttons if you press the bottom one have control mode selected and you can use wait me it's not working right now but Yeah, there we go. We can always have this and the RB is the mouse button and RT is right mouse button. Okay, so again, that's just an easy way of doing it without having an external mouse. <coughs> Next, what we want to do is extract the firmware and extract the production keys as well. So if, you, if you're coming from something like a Ryu Jinx background, another Nintendo Switch emulator, you might know with that one, you can just install the firmware using the zip file. You can't do that on you know Sudachi, so you do have to extract it. So right click on production keys, extract all. Okay, now that we've got that done, so Dachi, I recommend you put that in a folder, like some sort of application folder, maybe even program files, where it's a bit more permanent. And I would also recommend you rename it as well. I am just going to rename it to Sudachi instead of having like the version number in there. So right click, rename. And like I said, I'm just going to call it Sudachi. Okay, so right click copy it now and I've got a folder in my SD card code application and I'm going to put it here okay now we can launch it up and you can delete that old folder and zip file as well and we'll have a Sudachi application right here Ooh, what did I copy over I think, at my bad, I copied over the zip file and not the folder that I extracted. So let me redo that. So I paste that. No wonder the icons weren't appearing for the application. I was wondering why they weren't. I'm going to right click, rename as before. To Dachi. and here we go open that up there we go just open up Sudachi not you know command or you know room just Sudachi and 
Once this launches up, I'm going to go through the setup process. And close down the browser as well. So it says encryption keys are missing. And you know, we have the encryption keys, but we need to install them. To do so is very simple. And it's also saying anonymous data, click no. Go to tools, install decryption keys. And go to your downloads folder. The production keys folder that you already extracted. In there, there'll be a product keys. There might be title keys. You'll be able to, you know, find them as well in the same folder and install them. You don't need to worry. Click OK. Now, you need to install the firmware. You'll notice that it doesn't have any firmware version here. If you go to install, install firmware. Go to firmware folder, click install. It takes a few seconds. It's not very long at all. And now, we have 18. 18.0.0. Now we can configure our emulator. So emulation, configure. There's not many things that we want to change. Feel free to have a look in the hotkey UI, you know, anything that you want to specify, you can do. In system, select your language for me with British English or you know, as it really is, you know, actual English. And region is Europe. And everything else is fine. Memory layout, it's four gig by default. I'm gonna select eight gig, it says unsafe. I find it pretty stable, but it can really help with performance in some games, especially the more intensive ones and new ones like Super Mario Wonder and like Legend of Zelda. If you try 8 gig, it's not working, then you know, knock it down to 4, I mean 6 or 4. And the other thing before we continue is you want to open up the Armory Crate by pressing the button button here. And this is just an Asus ROG and ROG Alloy X specific you know, performance boost. But, you know, it helps, and especially now that we've you know, selected you know, a different amount of RAM. If we go to Settings, Performance, GPU Settings, and in here, Memory Assigned to GPU, you want to set this to Auto. When you try and change it, this will pop up. You will have to restart your system. So make sure this is on Auto. And next, if I close this down, if I open up the command center, make sure you are on turbo mode, so 25 watt mode. And if you plug in, you'll be in 30 watt mode for ROG Alloy X, for ROG Alloy slightly lower, but you'll still you'll be better if you're in turbo mode. Next, you want to go to CPU, leave that as auto, graphics. Make sure API is set to Vulkan. Now, the only two things that we want to change here are the resolution scale. Change that down to 0.5x, yeah, we're lowering it, and we're not increasing it to get the most performance. But we're going to have a filter on it. We're going to have AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution, which is also known as AMD FSR. So this is an upscaler. So we are you know, downscaling the resolution to 360p handheld, 540p docked. And using the FSR from AMD, you're upscaling. And to be honest, you can hardly tell the difference. So you get more performance without really having much of a visual impact. And for the FSR sharpness, I always leave it as default. I find that's fine. This doesn't improve performance, but this changes the end, you know, quality of the image. If you feel like ah, it's not quite right, you feel free to tweak this. But 88 is the default, and that's what I always use. Audio, everything can just be left on auto. Make sure it's not null, at least. And in controls, this is where you can map your controls. So you can map the built-in controls, or you can map an external controller. Obviously, you have the external controller connected via something like Bluetooth or USB, maybe if your console is docked, you can do that. And then you want to select Pro Controller, unless maybe you're doing some sort of GameCube game, uh, you know, old classic game, then you can do a GameCube controller. But otherwise, select Pro Controller. Other thing, make sure this is ticked, so it's green. Next, in input device, Xbox One Controller Zero is the built-in controls. If you have like another Xbox controller, it'll come up as like Xbox One Controller One, for example. So if you if you connect a controller, make sure you switch it over and don't think oh, I've already assigned stuff. But if you've assigned it and got it working for this one, you'll need to just not necessarily reassign, but you know, change the controller. Okay, so once you selected this, if I try and click up, uh, yeah, if I try and like it's it's not letting me you know do anything. It's not working. So the reason being, if I go to command center, we're in desktop mode. That's great for you, like moving the mouse or using this when you're not on command center. But when you're mapping the controls or when you're in game, you want to have game plan mode selected. And now, so you to continue navigating, you'll need an external mouse or just use your finger. So if I click this and if I click like that, it just figures it all out. 
Uh, so you want left and then right. There we go. And then if I want to change the D pad to you know the A key, there we go. It's button zero, but I'm gonna change it back. But that is how you get to work. And if I just move the analog sticks, as you can see, they work. Uh, there's not really much of a dead zone, so that's fine as well. But you can tweak the dead zone. Feel free to change any controls that you would like. And you can change them individually for docked and handheld as well. If you really want to, maybe you could have two different configurations. And now you can, you know, have a new profile, name it, save it. And the beauty of that, you could have different profiles for different games or even different users. And you can have multiple players as well. If you are having a game that has multiple players, you know, possibly. And that's pretty much it. There's nothing else that you want to mess around with in here. Click OK. Now to add our, our games. I want to double click this and I have a folder in my SD card called ROMs switch and in there let me show you I have a dot NSP file so they need they'll need to be your game will need to be in dot NSP or dot XCI format if they're in like a zip file how I've shown you how to extract other like files you can do that um, but yeah they'll need to be dot NSP and dot XCI and then you select the folder and there we are, here's our game. You can double click to launch or right click. Let me show you one little last thing. You can go to properties and if there's any specific, you know, settings that you know for the particular game that you're using, you can change them just for that game. So you have the more global settings that I've showed you, which are, you know, good global settings, but you can, you know, have specific ones as well. And you can have different configurations for the game if you really do want to. And I'll provide a link in the description to the Sudachi compatibility list as well. So you can check that, see what games work, see how well they work, and possibly you'll have the recommended settings on as well. But with this, the, what I've showed you, and just two more tweaks when the game launches, the performance is actually pretty darn good. And as always, depending on what game you are playing, your mileage will vary. If you're playing something new and more intense like this, you will need to, you know, you might get slightly lower performance, but older games will work better. So again, remember, in-game, make sure this is select to gamepad. Don't know why it wasn't working. There we go. And if you want to go full screen, you can go to view full screen right there. I'm happy to leave it as is. Click Mario. Oh, press the wrong button. And the one last or two last settings I want to show you. It's down here. It says docked. Click that. So it says handheld. So you are running on the handheld resolution, which natively would be 720p, but because we've knocked it down, it's 360p. But using the scaling, you won't notice a difference. And click high, change that to normal. So that's GPU accuracy. If you are playing a game and you gain a lot of artifacts, a lot of problems, put GPU accuracy back to high, but that does knock down performance. If you put it to normal, you get a boost in performance and most games will work just fine. And here we go. We have Super Mario Wonder working. The performance, you know, it's not amazing, but again, it's a new game. And uh, you know, as the emulator gets play updated, you will get better performance. And that is it. That's how you set up the Sudachi emulator on your ROG Ally or ROG Ally X to play Nintendo Switch games. Again, this video is not condoning piracy. It is for educational purposes only. If you have any questions, feel free to post down below in the comments. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for the Patreon page coming very, very soon in the upcoming weeks with all the exclusive extra emulation content as well. See you soon. Take care. Bye.